Russia will not be able to stop the course of history. Mankind and the international law are stronger than one terrorist state. Russia will be forced to end this war. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky there demanding just punishment against Russia for the ongoing war in Ukraine. It is all part of the Ukrainian president's so-called formula for peace that includes a call to reestablish the country's territory. Joining me now is retired U.S. Army Major General William Innert. Uh, General, thank you for being with us this morning. Um, I want to start with what President Putin said uh, earlier this week about um, the ongoing nuclear threat. Let's take a listen. If the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will without question use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people. This is not a bluff. This is not a bluff. How does the U.S. respond to this blatant threat? Well, I, I think we have to recognize that Putin doesn't think the way Western leaders do. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, does he really believe that we've reached Gatterdammerung? Uh, that is, that the, the, the violence at the end of the world sort of thing. If he has, then I think all bets are off. Uh, we have to question, will his subordinates, those people who have to transmit his orders down to the soldiers who would actually fire those missiles, will they follow his orders? Is there an effective Russian failsafe mechanism? Uh, I would think that unless Putin is suicidal, unless he believes that we've reached the end of the world, uh, an attack on a NATO nation is highly unlikely. Uh, a tactical device on Ukraine, far more likely. Uh, although I think he may be beginning to understand that the West is not going to buckle under to his aggression. But the Russian strategic view is that you escalate to de-escalate. So I think he's following that doctrine. He's escalating the war of words. Uh, in order that he can back down. Uh, and frankly, would he attack Ukraine with a tactical nuclear weapon? I think the entire world, with the possible exception of North Korea, would turn against him. As President Biden, President Biden noted in his United Nations address yesterday, 141 nations out of the 193 members have already condemned the Russian aggression. I think if he attacks Ukraine with a nuclear device, that's going to jump to 190. Uh, and, and we have to remember, too, that the Russia of today is not the Soviet Union of 1945, where it was allied with uh, the U.S. and the Allies to defeat Nazi Germany, nor is it even the Soviet Union of the 50s and 60s. So today it's a one-trick pony. Uh, Putin has already exposed the weakness, the military weakness of the Soviet Union, or excuse me, of Russia. So the only uh, real threat he has left is nuclear war. Well, and, and some wonder, I mean, he's running out of allies, certainly, and in terms of a coup, we'll see if, if that happens. What is Russia's nuclear capability, though? You say you don't believe there would be NATO targets, but what are some potential threats um, outside of Ukraine and within Ukraine right now with Russia's nuclear capability? Well, certainly Russia has a, a huge nuclear capability. They have more nuclear weapons than we do, uh, but... The, in terms of, uh, it, it doesn't make any difference that they have more than we do. We, we have what's called mutually assured destruction. That is, the Russians, uh, should they attack us, uh, they know that they would likewise be destroyed. Uh, they have a range of nuclear weapons from intercontinental ballistic missiles, which they would use to attack us or to attack Great Britain or, or any of our allies, uh, down to tactical nuclear devices that can be fired from artillery pieces such as they're already using or from cruise missiles like they've already been using in Ukraine, uh, smaller devices that uh, would uh, certainly could destroy it, uh, a small city uh, and contaminate it with radioactivity. So uh, the, the usage of a, of a large megatonnage uh, nuclear device would certainly trigger World War III and in, in, in society as we know it today when, when we retaliated. Uh, the use of a smaller nuclear device, a, a tactical weapon, uh, on the other hand, would, uh, while it would have an impact, and certainly I think as I discussed, 
certainly would turn the world against him, would not be uh, nearly as devastating as a full-scale nuclear war. Mm. Uh, a lot of scary scenarios there. Uh, the mobilization of these 300,000 reservists in Russia, will that have an impact at all on the battlefield, given some of their military experience is quite dated and many are resistant to be a part of it in the first place? Those are very good points you bring up, Marty. And, and frankly, uh, you're absolutely correct. You know, uh, Russia doesn't have the type of reserve National Guard system that we have. Uh, reservists and National Guardsmen here in the United States train a minimum, a minimum of 39 days a year. That works out to nearly eight five-day work weeks. Uh, so they, they get about two months of training as a minimum. And usually it's more than that. Uh, the, the reserves, uh, on the other hand, in Russia are simply what we would call the inactive reserve. That is, they've served in the military, they're veterans, uh, and they are subject to recall, but they really get zero or minimal, absolute minimal training. Additionally, he's got the problem, how does he equip these folks? They've already burned through uh, their latest equipment. Uh, the, the Ukrainians have been destroying their tanks and armored vehicles. Uh, so they're in a real uh, tough situation here, uh, and they don't have the cadre to train these folks. And, and training, bringing someone up to speed who's been out of the military for three years, four years, five years. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.